So I never did finance, was never in the finance world. In fact, I despised it. And then uh, in like probably August of 2020, uh, I started kind of like shit posting on Wall Street bets and like, you know, I saw the GameStop stuff and then like I didn't even have a trading account or anything, but then, you know, ended up picking up uh, some shares in October of 2020. And that was like when we had like when I met my wife and all this kind of stuff and we started dating and whatnot. Sorry, not what's important. In this instance, my wife, I love you, just so you know. <laughs> so, when GameStop started popping off, right, the whole thing behind this was that, like, you know, everybody was holding and we were making fun of how the rich people were getting fucked over and it was so funny and blah, 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 blah. And then they shut the buy button off, right? And then pretty much all of us got fucked over, right? Pretty much all of us that held basically got fucked over. But um, at the time, this was, you know, uh, at the time I wasn't working a job. Um, if you guys don't know, like I worked construction pretty much the majority of my life uh, for about 15 plus years. And uh, I, at the time, I didn't have a job. And uh, GameStop at the time had represented so much hope and so much optimism about like what could be in the potential future. You know, it, it meant so much to me in the moment, even though we had all gotten fucked over, you know, it, it, that stock started to actually like mean something to me. And then that's what started kind of my obsession with like the finance world. And so just to, again, give you guys some more background here, I started trying to trade after the GameStop sneeze stuff and I was so fucking terrible at it that I basically ran out of money and then I had to go back to working a full-time job. And uh, that was fucking terrible. The place that I worked at was terrible. The people I worked at were, were terrible and it was just not a good situation. But um, in the summer of 2022, uh, BBBYs happened and I ended up actually calling the bottom of that. Uh, fuck, I don't know how I got really fortunate. Um, and I caught a huge wave off of that. And that's kind of when I actually like started Jackie and I actually quit my job. I actually quit the construction job that I was at because the wife had essentially said like, you've got a knack and a passion for doing this. So you should do this and focus on this and I'll support us while you do this. And, um, you know, I, hated my job and I love trading and I was obsessively on trading view every single hour of every single day and I just couldn't get enough of it and um my family had a business when I was in high school and instead of go to college and go to university and do that sort of thing I was supposed to take over our family's business and that business ceased to exist basically the year that I had finished high school because of just some stuff that happened between my parents, unfortunately. And so, you know, went from like having this idea that I was going to start running our business to essentially both of my parents went bankrupt and, you know, uh, that's kind of where my adult life started is uh, I was sleeping in my car. And when I was done sleeping in my car, I actually got a job at, uh, at Visions Electronics. And my best friend at the time was also working at that place too. And uh, he was like, hey, bro, we just rented a house. We got a couch that you can stay on. If you want to sleep there, you can sleep there. And, uh, you know, that was kind of the start of like my adult life. So when I say this to you guys that I have been broke and poor for pretty much the majority of my adult life, I, I, I don't say that in a bullshit manner and I don't say that jokingly. I came and have come from very hard fucking times, man. And I had to dig myself out of that fucking hole. And I have found happiness within GME, not just because... It's GameStop because GameStop is just kind of like, to me, it's just like a whatever store. It's just like you get 
video games and shit there, you know? But GameStop, to me, the reason I love it so much is because of folks like you guys in the chat box. And again, I don't say this to be like sappy or lovey-dovey or any bullshit like that. I say that because you guys have held the stock the same way that I have held the stock. And you are still as passionate about it today as you were back then. And there's a reason that this company will succeed in the future is it's because of people like you. So people ask me, right? I'm going to circle back around to this question. People ask me all the time. They're like, Jackie, why GME? Why is GameStop your long-term investment, that the, the hill that you choose to die on? And the reason that I have chosen this hill is because of the people like you guys that have held through all of the bullshit and seen the nonsense and seen the fuckery and seen the garbage that has gone on. And I didn't come from finance. I came from construction and I am who I am. And I'm an anxious and somewhat over emotional at times person who has learned how to trade effectively. And I've taken these things and I've mumbled them all into Jackie Letitz. And I don't claim to be perfect and I don't claim to be Mr. Fucking Nice Guy all the time. But one thing that my message has always rung true with a lot of people in the chat box and with anyone who has followed me is I genuinely give a shit. Like I, I really give a shit and I want to see people do well. And you guys have afforded me the ability that I have done well. Right, there's no skirting around the fact that like I charge three to five hundred dollars for the Discord and there's two thousand members in there. If you do the fucking math, like I'm not poor and I'm not broke anymore. It's not hard to fucking figure that out and put two and two together. But I worked really fucking hard to get to this point. And I would hope that it's not the money that people think influences me. What influences me on GME is the people that hold this stock. And want better for every other person just like myself. Because there is nothing more that I want to see than this company succeed. And see the people that held with me and supported me. And helped me grow to this place. There is nothing more that I want to see than those same people. You guys in the chat box succeed the same way that I have. And the fact that people have held through all of these years tells me that everybody else wants the same thing. They want success. And I look at the CEO of this company taking no money, taking no shares, taking no options. This guy runs the company for free. His job is to build this company into something bigger than us. It is to build generational wealth for years and decades to come because he knows He's not a fucking dumb guy. He's not a dumb man. He understands that this stock means a lot of things to a lot of fucking people across an entire globe. He knows that. He's not stupid, you guys. He knows how much this company and this stock means to you guys. That's why he tries to show you with the things that he does. Right, His actions, not his words. He shows you, hey, I don't take any money. I'm here to make this company great. The way that I get richer is by making this company great because then his shares go up. And if his shares go up, his wealth goes up. That's what his wealth is tied to, is fucking GameStop increasing in share price. There is nothing more that the, game, the, the, the board at GameStop wants than for GameStop and this company to succeed. And Larry has outright told you guys in multiple tweets, he understands that this company is much greater than a company. This represents something much greater than just GameStop and Roaring Kitty, right? He even made a point to talk about in that stream. He said, forget the legacy side of the business. You're crazy to think Ryan Cohen hasn't been planning and scheming for three years. Because everybody associated with this company realizes the repercussions of what this company's success or this company's failure will mean in the future. So you best believe that these motherfuckers are going to work as hard as they possibly can to make sure that you guys, yes, you guys listening to this that hold shares of GME and have held shares from GME for three years, four years, five years, ten years, I don't give a fuck. 
Their mission is to see this company successful, which means that the share price goes higher, which means that everybody fucking wins except for the people that many years ago decided to try to short this company into bankruptcy. So you don't need to even believe in me. It's never been about me. It's not about the money I make. It's not about the Discord stuff. It's not about the Super Chats. It's not about any of that. It is ultimately boils down to the success of the people that deserve it and have earned it. We have come this far to see this out. And either you believe that Ryan Cohen is fucking Hitler and this man's trying to fuck us all over. Or you believe that this company is driven to success by the very people that own the shares of this company, which is you and I and everybody else in that fucking chat box and around the world, in Super Stonk, in RGME, in fucking Timbuktu, in Twitter, on Reddit. It don't fucking matter where you found this stock or where you bought this company. And if you believe that the people that have held this stock for three plus years are going to continue to hold... And prove that sometimes good really does triumph evil. Mark my words. Something massive will happen with this stock. And not a fucking soul will see it coming. Because that's how Ryan Cohen and GameStop have always functioned. You won't see it coming. But I want people to realize that while there have been a lot of shitty people that have come and gone through the years, both through the GME and the AMC community, I am here because I created a persona that was built on this stock and this company's success. And I'm here to tell you that I'm not going anywhere. And I could have chosen to pack up all of my fucking money and just walk away from it because I'm happy as it is. But that's not and never has what this has been about. It has always been about the success and seeing the success of this company. And beyond the success of this company is the success of the people in the chat box that come and enjoy that with me. Because it is fucking boring to do it alone and it sucks. So yes, while I may have made some money and done well and built a following and done all these other things, it has not come at the cost of hard work. But that money and that hard work does not change who I fundamentally am as a fucking person. So, with GME analysis this week, once again, folks, I don't even have to say it. It's a doji. And the beatings will continue until morale improves. But if you watch the video that we put out on Friday, where I talked about this on stream, we talked about this potential algorithm bullshit, We've marked off all the zones that we needed to see on GME. 
right? The expectation is, is that there is potential that this could round back off and come back down here. All right. But as of right now, the volume is pathetic. The candles are anemic and the share price isn't going or doing a single goddamn thing. So there just ain't really much to talk about right now. But we're getting close and we're getting to that point in time where it is starting to become apparent that a big move is coming. We are watching the weekly Bollinger Band squeeze as price stays above the center line. That's the big focus, 21.30. Want to see price close above that. Don't care if it's a doji. Don't care if it's low volume. Don't care about any of that. Just want to see GameStop continue to hold above support. So support can be 21 and support can also be back down here in this pink zone that we marked off right now. I don't know why I moved that pink zone, but that's where that actual zone is. All right. So that's what we're looking at. We have a fib time zone that we're going through in the end to middle of middle to end of October. So I am not again anticipating very much. And those of you that had watched the video from a couple of weeks ago. Well, remember that I told you guys, I anticipated that GME was going to do something like this. And so far, we haven't really clued out from that yet. So that's my expectation for GME. I just want people to realize that in the moments of nothingness, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not bearish on GME. I'm not a fucking sellout. There just ain't really much to talk about when it's not really doing much. We don't have an earnings announcement. Remember a video a couple weeks ago, I told you guys that because the expectation was September 4th, that we should anticipate that there should be an earnings announcement on the 28th this Wednesday. If there is no earnings announcement for Wednesday the 28th, that means that this anticipated date is incorrect because they need to push this out one week in advance. So anticipate that the, when, the earnings announcement should come on Wednesday. And that should be telling us that earnings should be Wednesday for next week. All right. But that's what we're paying attention to for GME this week. Really, guys, not much to say about this. We know our levels. We know where good areas to buy are. We know where support is. We know what we're looking for. Right. The last thing I'll leave you guys with is I have created an indicator that shows moments of big volatility and tells me when price is going to make big moves. Okay, when you see these little flashing blue vertical lines, that's what it is, right? And back here, you can see that that led to an explosive move, right? You can see that this one, right, oh, led to an explosive move, right? Before ultimately, I mean, making a monster retracement, right? Then you can see that this one led to two explosive moves, 17% down, then 48% up. And then you can see this one that was created. And this one actually left us an indicator target that we actually ended up aiming for and hitting. So this is very interesting because if GME does dump in the same way that this thing did, right, it will leave us a big indicator target on the high side. And then most of us, right, are aiming for 15 and 10 for re-entries. And again, leaving an indicator target all the way back at 20, you guys can appreciate that that's like anywhere from a 50 to 100% plus move, which is big, right? So my indicator is now flashing off a signal on the daily telling us that volatility is going to start, you know, really diminishing here, but a big move is coming and we will see a big breakout like move that's 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 prepping up days, weeks. I, I don't know. It's just this indicator is telling us and warning us that there is going to be a big explosive and expansive move on GME. So because options are very cheap, those of you that don't really care, great time to kind of run a spread trade right? Because options are so fucking cheap. So you could take maybe one or $2 out of the money on a call, one or $2 out of the money on a put, give yourself three months. That indicator, to, that indicator is going to explode be way before three months. And whether it's a big move down or a big move up, you're going to clean house on those spreads because volatility is so low and options pricing is so cheap on GME right now. Right. So that's something that you could consider. And again, none of this is financial advice. It's all just educational content. Appreciate everybody listening. That's the end of the GME discussion. And thank you for listening.